we have spent most of our day driving, getting unstuck out of the snowy roads, and just mobbing through a bunch of mud. Broke his tibia and his fibula, the lower part of his leg yesterday. See out here, it's like, find a thick, thick pocket with some elevation and some rocks, that's probably where these elk are gonna be, these bulls are gonna be. <laughs> what's up guys welcome to a new video we uh just barely put foot on our unit for the first time and this is the day before our hunt starts it's a late season elk hunt and it's a rifle hunt and casey and i both have tags on this hunt so i think we're going to see a lot of different stuff and a lot of different types of terrain uh throughout the next week i'm excited we decided to come up to this high country i guess it'd be higher country for this unit and man we were not expecting this amount of snow but we got the chains on the tires we've been mobbing up here and this is the first time we've seen a little bit of this country without the fog it's pretty bad weather and um, there's a pretty good blanket of fog over these hills so i'm excited guys we got rifle elk hunt um, it's our last hunt of the year before we all end this out and casey and i both packing tags and just excited to see how this goes. Don't know what to expect, so we're just gonna get out and do what we do and cover country and glass. Should be fun, and I think there's a chance to turn up some giants. Hey, I know if you guys watch the channel long enough, you guys should know we have a phrase that we've used quite a bit, and it's, uh, you only get so many opening days, which is very true. And there's very few things that are better in the woods than opening day, except for day before opening day. In my opinion, the day before opening day, or even two days before opening day, is better than opening day. It's like this, I tell my kids this, I just told them this, Christmas was just a week ago. They're like, I can't wait for a Christmas day, I can't wait for Christmas morning, which I get, Christmas morning is exciting. But if we're being honest, what's better than Christmas morning? Christmas Eve. Because you have all that anticipation of what's gonna happen tomorrow. What's going to happen in the morning? What's Santa going to bring you? Was I good? Was I naughty? So I say Christmas Eve outweighs Christmas morning. I would almost say that the day before opening day is better because there's no stress. There's no pressure. You still have a full day to go out, look around, do a little grocery shopping, and then you know tomorrow you're packing a rifle with a tag in your pocket. Who knows what Santa's going to bring you tomorrow morning? Who knows if we've been good or naughty. Got our first bull on my unit. Couple ridges over, just bedded in the snow on the north facing slope. Looks to be a decent six point. You can, I can just see his antler right up against this big boulder. Um, he's bedded, I haven't seen any others, but I'll bet money there's something else over there. I can get a spotting scope and check him out, but that's exciting. I was telling these guys, like, what, what's that first bull going to be like? Where is he going to be? And I've been pretty discouraged walking through this stuff. You'd think you'd see more elk, but finally got one in the bino, so they're up here. Just got to pick them out, and I'm sure they're not moving until dark, so. All right, we got bull number two. Matt just spotted this bull. He stood up about 50 yards, 60 yards to the right of the bedded bull, and this one's pretty decent. He's got a really, really pretty six-point frame. Great tine length all around, just kind of compact and narrow. Um, dang nice bull though, but we're holding out for something a little bigger, at least for the first few days. But it's cool to see that there's at least two bulls. We figured with that one being bedded that there had to be something with him, at least one more. And uh, Matt picked him out, he's a nice bull. You just never know, man. This is one of those hunts where you might not see a lot of elk through the entire week, but you might see a 
a giant. So we're just gonna be patient and pick it apart. But this snow sure is gonna help in this high country anyways. Really? Yeah. Like okay, actually that's spooky. It's not we did. Hmm. right there dude. I'm just kidding. Have you been using them? Good. Grab your hat. Say they film over there. What's up everybody? It is opening day. Um woke up to some not the best news. Uh Casey's oldest boy Gage I guess broke his leg yesterday and we just got a inreach on the Garmin inreach message from his wife because we've been out of service that uh, he broke his tibia and fibia snowboarding and so uh, we just ran down to service uh, first thing like a 20 minute drive down to service uh, it's 5 13 right now we woke up at like four getting ready just for an opening day and uh, things changed so life happens man oh it's a scary feeling when you're away from home but We'll wait for Casey to type, fill you guys in on what's going on. Well, unfortunately this is not um, exactly how I thought opening morning was going to look. It uh, changed a little bit. Logan's wife asked, or said something about my son's leg, so I interreached my wife back this morning and she said that Gage broke his tibula and his fibula, the lower part of his leg, yesterday snowboarding and basically they've been in the hospital since last night waiting going to like emergency surgery which not isn't not an emergency but supposedly they got to go put a rod through his leg and they shattered him completely and they shifted so basically his leg was being held on by his skin and muscle which my, I, my wife sent me pictures and if you guys know me I can't look at stuff like that so Logan looked at it and it's not good it's not good my wife said it was she couldn't watch it either anyway so we are uh, she got some service and talked to my wife but uh, I'm gonna go to town and figure some things out. I feel absolutely terrible um, not being there for him. But uh, my wife's super strong. She's there for him. Um, I'm gonna go call him before he goes in. He's supposed to have surgery at eight. So. Uh. Hopefully Eric has a little bit better morning than we did. <laughs> Go get a me. Had an hour and a half push to get down into some of this country. We're hunting really, really low elevation compared to where we were yesterday. Today and tomorrow both called for on and off snow and rain showers. So with the fog that we were dealing with yesterday, we figured why don't we spend the first couple days out here in the low country where we can see and have great visibility. So it could be good. I don't know what to expect. I've never, never been out here. So Gage, hope you're doing good, man. Wish you a speedy recovery. Hope everything's all right back home. But yeah, let's go see if we can't glass up a bull or two. Yeah, it's a bull. All right, guys, uh, Braden just spotted a bull all the way down. So low, like, it's far away, but it's in a cool spot, like ledged out with cliffs. It's gotta be a bull being down there where it's at and just big yellow body. So getting out in vortex. Hopefully it's a shooter and we'll have somewhere to, something to look forward to down there. My heart always pounds at this moment. Dude, it's freaking big old body. It's in the cool, this is where a giant would play it, fellas. It's a bull. His points don't seem that long on the tops. Not bad, but I don't think he's a mega, but it is tough to see. He's in a cool spot, dude. I like that freaking rough country down there. Yes. 
got another bull, guys. It's getting fun. These elk are living in the nastiest stuff where you think big bulls would pull into after the rut and probably winter until they shed. That's exactly what this stuff looks like, shed country. Cliffy, slopes, steep. Um, he's right across the hill from where the other one was. And he also looks to be alone. He's facing us. Ooh, we got potential. Dang, he's cool. Six point frame. That's a really pretty, pretty bull. That's like, that's one of those where you're like, yeah, I'd be happy, but should we hold out for something better? He's a nice bull for sure. Really pretty six point. Just kind of has that really cool frame too. Good unders, royals that kind of tilt forward. He is in the coolest spot, man, like cliffs. Oh yeah, dude. You put a triple under on a bull like that, I'm probably pulling the trigger. But I don't think he's got triples. But he is pretty dang sweet. All right, we just spotted two more bulls. Um, you guys might be able to see him with this lens zoomed in. There's just two yellow dots in the cliffs out there. We're gonna get the scope on him and check him out. Hmm, nothing great. The top one uh, is a good six point, but his royal's busted, but he's pretty cool. Got a really cool look to him too, so. I don't know how many we've seen. That's a long ways over there. No shooters on that side yet, but we're bound to find a shooter eventually. I mean, we're seeing quite a few bulls more than I expected, so that's a good sign. Quick update, guys. It's 9.45, and I'd say we've had a heck of an opening morning. Some of the bulls are still up feeding the ones that we just saw. There was actually three of them, not two, and one of them had really dark antlers. Good six by six. His royal was broke on the left, but pretty dang nice bull, but man, they are a long ways. We've been perched up on this knob and we glassed over here. I think there's like four or five elk sheds over here and then one ahead of us, like six. So we're gonna go take a look at them. That's a good sign though. We were, if you can find elk sheds when you're hunting this time of the year, probably gives you a pretty good idea that you're in the right spot, right in their winter range home. So we're gonna go take a look at them. Just check them out anyways. See if it's anything worth packing out. They look chalky though. Oh, there's a, oh, there's a, oh, they're right there. Come down here, okay? I'm gonna video for a sec, I can see. Look at that, is it a mom and cat? Yeah. That's cool. I can smell it, it's good. Um, that was a pretty wild event. Brain's like, dude, look at that big bear. And I just happened to like look down and the first bear I saw, yeah, that's like a stubby little bear. And they're like, oh, he stood up. I'm like, this one ain't standing up at all. Anyways, looks like a sow and a cub. There they go, right down by this little waterfall over there. That's pretty sweet. Gotta, that's got to be the bull, right? We think we got the bull we glassed earlier. The, the biggest bull that we've seen. Try to figure out if this is the bull we saw. Our bedded bull just stood up. I'm trying to get a better look at him, but he's in the tree still. But we're like 560 yards across the canyon. 
he's definitely no slouch, that's for sure. He's not small. It's one of those that does make you think. I mean, you always want to hold out for some mega giant, right? On the first day especially. All right, guys, it's 4.15 p.m. This bull that we've been watching bedded finally got up and gave us a good look. We had to check him out through some trees. He's just sitting there feeding. Dang nice bull, straight six. From what I can tell, no broken points. Really, really cool colored antlers too, but he is living in this freaking winter range, like rugged, what I would consider shed antler country. We glassed a couple across the way, but he is in the most random spot down here. And he's got this whole little canyon to himself from what we saw this morning. But we got an hour and a half of daylight, good daylight anyways. So we're gonna cruise this Razorback Ridge, glassing off both sides, just hoping to see some other bulls. But uh, killer day so far. Shooter towards the tail end of the hunt for sure. So we're not gonna bug him or anything, we're just gonna leave him right here. And if need be, come back and check him out later. But for now, we're gonna keep looking. That was a dark one, dark brown. That's cool. What a day. Seen a lot of cool stuff today. 5.15. Not much daylight left. It's getting dark, it's overcast. And uh, after we saw that last bull that Braden spotted in this yellow grass flat, we haven't seen anything since, but we're not giving up hope. We keep putting up the binos checking everything we can and the higher you get the thicker it gets so it's pretty tough but somewhere in here is a big old bull and we just need to weed him out over the next eight days Logan. Here's your backpack. It's in the mud. So many things. Guys, today is my opening morning. Yesterday was legally opening morning, but we had to go deal with some things, which everything's good. My boy shattered his leg snowboarding. And I've always wondered when I was going to get that inReach message that something's not right at home. And, uh, that was yesterday morning at 4.30 when I woke up. I felt like I needed to go make sure everything was good on the home front, which he had to have surgery and get a plate in. And I told him I'd come home if he wanted me to, and he said, told me to go kill a bull. So here we are. My wife's rock star. She's got everything covered. She was said the same. She said, don't come home. Stay out there. We've got this thing. So I'm happy he's safe. And, you know, luckily it wasn't something more serious, you know. It's something he can get over and get healthy and be right back on his feet. So we feel fortunate and blessed. We are going to go ahead to the lookout and go try to find Big Bull Elk. We are supposed to get a little rain here in about two hours, three hours. So hopefully we can go get a, go get a bull tied to a tree and maybe get one killed.
introduce you guys to a good buddy of ours, Aaron Altaha. Aaron is a big reason why we're down here. He's the one that really brought to our attention the hunting opportunities that are here. Aaron is a part-time guide in the area and offered up his assistance. I told Aaron I didn't need a whole lot of help, but I could use his knowledge on the unit and the elk that are here. And after spending a few days with Aaron, I can tell you he knows those two things better than anybody. Pretty sweet. Man. Yeah, I don't think he's a shooter, but it's not like I'd be sad to shoot that bull. He's a nice bull with character, which is what I love. Extra points seem to get me and how often you're gonna be able to shoot a drop tine elk? Dude, not often. No. Dang it. If ever. So, from where we left you guys on the ridge where we spotted the three bulls, we hiked back to the truck, which is about a mile and a half. And then it's been at least an hour and 30 minutes. Yeah. Hour and 30, maybe an hour and 40 minutes. We're what, probably 20 minutes away after where we got to start hiking? The roads out here are absolutely Splendid. Um, you can tell by looking out my window. Oh, there's bull up. Oh, shit. <laughs> anyway, we're about uh, to where we want to be to uh, hike in. Hopefully, we're not hopefully, we're doing this, right? Yeah. We're going to hike in. The bulls are going to be bedded down in the creek off into the big box canyon, and we're going to smoke that big guy. And uh, it's going to be all celebrations and fireworks from there, right? Yeah. Got a little work to do. We got to make some good decisions. I always say this we found the, we found the the target we acquired the target now we got to go hunt the target we gotta make good decisions going in uh, storms hit us which we were planning on um, hopefully it doesn't get too bad but that will all play in a part of uh of hunting the target so uh, it's going down the problem we have is a storm blowing in what direction is that north from the north these bulls if you can see that rock in the background just build around that rock in a little wall. Problem we have, we'll have to drop down and get on the other side to shoot back. But the wind's going with the storm like this. So anyway, we try to get down in there, the wind's gonna, they're gonna catch the wind. So it's not the very best play. And I'm kind of that, everyone's different. I'm a slow player, I like to make sure everything's good. Once we have the target acquired, I wanna make sure everything's perfect and go ahead and kill them. It's, I think the hardest part of hunting is finding that target, finding what you want to kill. And then once you find it, then you just slow down and you, you make your very best decisions, like I was saying earlier. Make the very best calls to get in there and kill them. I think going in there tonight, we only have two hours of, of flight anyways, and it's supposed to start snowing, so I don't think going in there tonight's the best decision. Aaron agrees. He thinks we should be back. Come back in the morning bright and early and get in there and kill him and have all day to pack him out of there, so. You concur. You concur. You concur. Dude, look at that bull right under that cliff. Oh shoot. That's freaking sweet. We got a bull bedded under a cliff. It sure has a similar frame to the one that we saw yesterday on this side. If that is him, he's crossed. But anyways, we're gonna get the scope and check him out, but that's freaking sweet, dude big band of cliffs like this and the bull's just bedded right at the base of it. I think it is the same one, dude. Like, really round fronts. See the small fifth on the opposite, opposite side? Yeah, it's not great. Yeah, big ones and it's kind of straight too, so this bull is crossed. He is living in sheep country, that dang thing. That's like my dream right there. If that was a giant bull, that would be like my dream. To shoot him in that nasty stuff, I don't know why. It'd suck to pack out, but it'd be cool, cool spot.
What day is it? Day three. We're snowed out. We didn't even get up to go hunting today because the snow was so bad. Some of these mountain ranges that are behind us you typically see from camp, but just way too much fog and too much snow. So we're gonna use today just to go to town, do laundry, take a shower, get cleaned up and reorganize the tent and everything. But the tent uh, took some damage last night with all the snow. It was soaking wet on the inside due to either leaks or condensation or both. And at some point, I think around 4 a.m., a big dead branch came crashing down through this ponderosa and just right next to right next to the tent so we dodged that one but yeah guys this is gonna be some amazing conditions if you ask me for hunting elk this time of year when this snowstorm blows out I think we're gonna see a lot more elk than we were with it just being dry ground but it's exciting just got to get to town and give this another day or two and I think we'll be hunting, hunting again Hello. You can start to see a little bit. It's uh, day four of the hunt, and we did another sleep-in day because we woke up at 4 a.m. and it was just a complete whiteout. We've already got some feedback from a few guys that have actually made it to the to the unit. Two things I'm getting for feedback: people are getting stuck, and you can't really see your glass. So I'm glad we didn't go out the last couple days. You know you got to put yourself out there to get a chance but we decided to save our energy for the tail end of the hunt and uh not go out yesterday or today and just get chores done because there's always stuff we need to get done we've been running out of fuel so we went into town yesterday and filled up all our gas cans um, loaded up on groceries and snacks and gear and, and now we're just ready to kind of get some rest and regroup and do it again so every day this is camp chores Taking care of the vehicles, wiping them all down, getting them ready for the next hunt. I think we are going to try to make an effort to get out for the evening hunt, as long as uh, weather permitting, of course. But so far, it looks like it might clear up and give us a chance for the evening hunt, which I think is going to be killer. Uh, Casey's up at bat at the kitchen, cooking a big old breakfast. He's the best guy you want in camp if you like to eat good. So thanks to those guys for cooking. I'm gonna take care of the vehicles and then uh, hopefully we'll get back out there today. It's go time. Storms just lingering a little bit, but from here, to, you know, tonight it's just a lower, lower percentage chance of precipitation, so. I would suspect the wind's probably going to pick up and it's going to blow the storm out, so we're going to go get on the glass and point and try to find that bull we saw the other day. Try to find him and his two buddies he was with, but tonight could be the night. If not, we have good weather the next couple days, no fog, no, no snow, so we'll be able to get out and try to tie this bull up. It's definitely a shooter bull from what we saw, so like I said earlier, Fired the target, now we just gotta go hunt the target. And we're gonna have the opportunity. Now the weather's blowing out, but by about a mile hike into the point, and then we're gonna probably drop down into a canyon and try to get an eye on it. So morning. Welcome. Welcome to what time is it? 405? I had a I had a thought. What do you guys what do you guys think? What if we participated in a sport where 
it got good at like noon. You know, like noon is the time you wanted to be outside. I'd be so like, it. you guys get up. It's like ten thirty. We got to get going, so we can be out there before noon. Be nice, huh? I pee into it. I think I just got into it. What's that called? Ice fishing? Yeah. Good. Man goes out early to do that. Sitting too. on a sheet of ice out in the middle of the lake, you know? Yeah, I feel that. What about watching football? That gets good at 11 a.m. on the West Coast. Let's do that sport. I like that sport. All right. I'm in it. ECs up in the atom. What's up? You ready for the day, dude? Not yet. It's 4 a.m. and I don't know exactly why, but we're two hours away from where we hunt. So we wake up at 4 to try to get to where we're going around 6. That's four hours of driving there and back every day. <laughs> Loss of sleep. It's like three hours too much. I know. Damn. <laughs> that tight? Yep. We have no business being up here at all in a vehicle. So I'm like sweating bullets. Little nervous, we got one truck ahead of us so we kind of told each other we'd cruise together. Maybe even get up here in glass together because we're going to the same spot but I'm nervous. Uh, we might be able to get in but can we get out? one of those bulls we saw the other day or not but he's real close to where they were at so we're figuring it's probably got to be one of them but he didn't give us that long of a look just kind of sat feeding on a juniper and then just kind of came around the hill so he looks big like we saw his unders pretty wide and then he got to a point where I could just see the trees moving I could just see the tips and it looks like his fifths and his six were pretty stacked yeah, I always say when it looks like the fifth, it's just as long as the fourth. It's usually a pretty good ball, and they looked good. So we're going to go back, drive around, 
hopefully see where he's bedded. Hopefully he just went around the hill and bedded in there. Time to rip, to rip, rip roar. That's a new thing. We're gonna go rip roar. Rip, rip up this, up this canyon. And let the weather be roar. Rip roar. Remember that. Hopefully we can go turn this bull up again. I think we have a pretty darn good play looking at Onyx. I think from where we were over there, he just went around the hill. But from Onyx, it looks like there's a point we'll be see, be able to see around that. So hopefully he wasn't just passing through and kept going. But he went and bedded on that hillside. If he did that, I think we'll turn him up and most likely get a shot. So I'm excited. It's only like 12:30. Got plenty of time. Let's let's rip roar. Well, we came, we saw, and we conquered. Eh? We, we found the bull we came in here to find. He was just about another thousand yards further than we wanted. So this morning we were only found one bull from over there. And uh, he looked big, but we wanted to confirm and make sure he was for sure a shooter. So we came in here about, I don't know, it's a lot more, one thirty. It's five thirty six o'clock now, so we've been sitting here and just barely last few minutes of light. We've spotted the three bulls. There was three bulls, so there must have been two with that bull this morning, but one was for sure that bull we spotted this morning. Um, he's a nice bull, no doubt about it. He's got a big back end. That's what I saw this morning. It's his fourth and fifth matched up. It looked like he had good fronts, but we never got like a real good solid look this morning, but we did this tonight. He's not quite as big as we thought, but still a nice, a nice bull. We just have no time to get over there and kill him. And, uh, I don't know how you get over there and kill him without just a long, 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 long hike. But I think we're going to come back here in the morning. This is honestly the, this canyon is the only place we've seen mature bulls. Only really a place we've seen bulls, to be honest, in three days. So I like it. And there's other bulls in here, we believe, so. So uh, we had a little slow evening. Didn't see much for elk today, but uh, we checked some areas off the list. And uh, Casey and Logan are just getting off the hill. They had an exciting night. I'm sure you guys heard about it. So I'm in the kitchen taking Casey's place for the evening. But he makes it very easy. He pre-cooks a lot of stuff. So we got some taquitos in the toaster oven for an appetizer. And then we got some taco meat. We're going to have some tacos. So I'm just going to warm this up. Casey already pre-cooked it, pre-seasoned it. So I'm just going to throw it in the pot on the camp chef, warm it up. And we'll see you guys when Casey and Logan get here. Good morning, good morning. Does it feel like Groundhog's Day yet to you guys at home? It's starting to feel like we've been waking up at four o'clock for the last like 26 days. Um, but it's really only day five or six? Day six? Five? Day six? Day six. Day six. Something needs to die today. Spent way too much time out on a mountain, glassing, hiking, looking, finding for something not to die today. Another two hour drive on these beater roads, just kicking our trucks butts. But we've got a special guest today. This is Grant from Illinois. So uh, he's been out here hunting the last five days. Saw a couple bulls early in the hunt, but uh, we met him at camp. He had one more day to hunt and he was just gonna do it solo. So we said, screw that, that's never as fun. It is, but um, not in these conditions. You wanna always have someone with you in a pickup truck if you're gonna go drive these roads. So figured it'd be safer and maybe a little more fun to have him come hunt with us. So he, this is his first elk hunt and uh, I hope we can get him on a bull. It's kind of the goal today. So, what do you think? You shoot any decent, nice bull? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> First elk hunt. Pretty excited. Yeah, it's always fun to help. I probably get more excited and glass and glass harder now that I'm helping someone. But, uh, 
it's first light. We're hunting some country similar to where we hunted the first couple days, just a little more west. And it's steep, it's thick, and if we get closer to the creek bottom, I think we'll find some elk. So let's do it. Pretty rough morning. We got into some country that just looks perfect. Super thick, super steep. It's got some ledges. It's 10.30 a.m. and we just kind of keep our keeping our eye on everything. Just making sure a bull doesn't get up to switch beds or anything with the sun getting a little high. But we went down, we glassed, covered some country, didn't see anything, and now we're working our way up doing the same. Might relocate to the next canyon over to where we were the first and second day and saw some bulls. So that place had the most action. And if we're gonna help Grant get a bull, I think it's a good idea to maybe go back to where we've already seen some, hoping that they haven't been pressured too much. So that's the plan. Well, I think we're gonna give up on this place finally. This is our fourth time in here and I mean, it's been a good spot. I, I just would assume that we would have saw more elk in all the country we were able to see. I mean, we can see for miles for like at least 200 degrees around us, but I mean, really only spotted five bulls in this area, for, well, from this knob, and they're all over towards another area that we've hunted. So we're gonna go check out some new country tonight, um, this afternoon, and go see if we can find something that uh, wants not to run away when we can't find them. But it's been beautiful, man. I love this country. I love sitting in glass. It's probably one of my very favorite things of hunting is just trying to turn animals up through the vortex binos or the spotting scope. So on to the next place. Closing in on. Last light out here. The only elk spotted were out of the unit. We're on the boundary right here, it's 510. So probably 20 more minutes of light or so, shooting light anyways. Just keep going, keep glassing. Same stuff over and over and over, just hoping something pops out. Worn down though, big time. Between the driving and just the slow time, you start to get discouraged pretty easy. Start to think back. Hmm, should have shot that bull at the drop time. Maybe the one under the cliff. But it's all good. In the moment, didn't want to shoot him, so no regrets.
Dude, all I've got to say right now is boom, shaka, waka. Sun's out, gun's out, we're in a new area, I'm feeling really optimistic. We got today and two more days left, but man, it's just gonna take that one time for us to be like, oh shoot, pull, 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 shoot a pull. And what's gonna happen? And uh, it could happen at any time. You guys know how it is, roller coaster, ups and downs is what elk hunting is. But uh, dude, everything can change just like that. And that's what hunting is. You should always try to put yourself in an opportunity to have things change. Be pushing, be grinding, doing all the things that you think are the best decisions to put yourself in the right spot at the right time. And, uh, you know, sometimes it doesn't happen, doesn't happen, but you're always working, hopefully working towards that, that moment where everything changes. So, got the backpacks loaded up. We're gonna go just hiking and glassing. It's kind of same same program we've been doing. We really don't have a target bull over here because we've never been back in here. So, um, but dude, this time of year, their bulls are wintering and wherever they like to winter. And so we're just trying to figure out where that big mature bull is on, on to winter. Hopefully Maddie and Eric have the same op opportunistic attitude as we do. <laughs> Took me a second through that word. It's a big one, four syllables. That's like five, fifth year of learning English, you, you learn stuff like that. Anyway, let's go. We just found a bowl. Found a bunch of bowls actually, finally. I think one's a shooter. Got about half an hour. I'm just gonna get on him and see. It's a long poke, but let's see how it feels. Smaller one. He's kind of on the left side of that tree. Yeah, he's coming out now. See, with his head left. He's not the shooter? No. No. Okay. To the right, you'll see a, the butt of a stump. Okay, I see his antler. Yeah, you see how he's bigger? He looks like a good boy. Okay, when he steps out, I'm going to shoot, kill him, okay? Right. Yeah, I think he's got a kicker. <laughs> Logan. Yep. Oh, hind man. leg. You're good. He's still right there, man. <coughs> he's not going nowhere. He's not running, dude. You're good. Get on him. So he's just behind the tree where you just shot. Okay, he's slowly moving left. Can I look through there real quick? Yeah. He's right here. Excuse me. Right there, right? Yep. He just came up a little bit higher. Come on. Fish. He's real big. Holy cow. So Casey's on the gun right now. Mm -hmm. it's so yeah. cool. See Dude, watch, yeah. watch his antlers go back. Woo! Damn! I'm like, reload. You're good. He's still right there, man. It's not going nowhere. I'm just thinking, like, if it hit him there and went through, like, it should have got long, guts okay. maybe long, but... If it's high enough, yeah. Low. No, low. Man, it's right here. It's low. 100%. Maybe it is. I've seen very similar shots, dude. Like, like, if not pressure, you're good. they really aren't going far. 
No, yeah, he's gonna be. He's gonna lay down. And he'll yeah, be stiffed, he'll up. stiffed up. We watched him for like an hour, dude, and he made Damn. it. He, we last saw him right up here by this tree. So he only made it like ten or fifteen yeah. yards. You're good. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. How are we? How are we feeling? Um, I'm a little optimistic this morning. I uh, hit a hit a bull last night. We finally found an absolute giant shooter bull last light last night, and um, took shot at him. Which you know, out here it felt like since day one it was going to be a longer poke and. I took a shot, which I felt super confident in. Felt very uh, confident in the setup. And uh, hit the bull. We're not exactly sure exactly where I hit the bull. Um, some of us think kind of quartered away. Might shot him up through maybe the guts and up through one of the lungs. The other guys, the other group of us think maybe we hit him just lower leg. Either way, man, he acted really weird like he got sick real quick because that's kind of why I'm thinking it got body cavity but he was with four other bulls the other four bulls were trying to leave and he wouldn't leave uh, he just kind of sat there in the same spot didn't really move more than like 15 yards all night and then I tried to get in closer and get another one in him and I couldn't I just couldn't find him he was in the trees and I couldn't get another shot on him so we're gonna go up there and hopefully um, find him one way or another I think um, I have to put another one in him uh, we're thinking he's going to be bedded close to where I shot him last night. And so we've kind of got somewhat of a strategic plan to uh, kind of spread out, get up on a high knob where I can glass down in and hopefully find him in his bed and then sneak in and kill him. And it, or he might be dead. So, yeah. like, the more updates, the better. If it's, yep. hey, we got him, just hold tight. Or, hey, yeah. you know, nothing yet. Yep, yep. Just to know. Lots of information. Okay. We'll keep an eye out. All right, we I mean, find him, we'll tell you too. Yeah. So we'll, we'll have to get Hey guys, we just got to the lookout. We're actually right where Casey shot and we got the bull spotted bedded, his head up, so he's still alive. Hogan and Casey dropped some elevation and me and Aaron stayed up to keep an eye on the bull. But they dropped elevation because they had some bushes in front of them from this vantage. So it could be any minute that it's gonna go down. He's going down. He's going down. He's dead, dude. You just killed that bull. You just freaking killed him, dude. Love you, buddy. Thank you so much, man. Oh, man, that was stressful. Hey, you can always follow me around. Huh? You know, I always follow you, dude. You just killed a slammer. Yes, dude. Driven. Relentlessly compelled by the need to accomplish a goal, not only defines a successful hunt, it truly describes us. Hush. We've been doing this long enough now we understand. Like our business, every meaningful adventure comes with its own difficulties. Some you've been through and can plan for. Others, like your son wrapping his leg around a tree while you're thousands of miles from home, are new and catch you off guard. But that's why, years ago, when we all came together and started collectively working as a team, we agreed to showcase every hunt exactly how it unfolded, knowing that through the slow times to the fast action, the great shots to even the poor shots,
trials at home to successes in the woods that you, the people watching this right now, the ones who have continually supported us through the years, could relate. Believing that the successes found in the field can be directly applied to any goal we set in life. And that's what keeps us driven. Man, our crew worked hard this week. That's what you call a grind. I mean, the hunting was tough, not a lot of elk. Roads are absolute terrible, beating our vehicles to death, but we'd never give up, man. We just keep going and grinding and hopefully put ourselves in a position for something like that. <laughs> and there he is, my man, EC. Nice work, how was it? Great job on the spot, guys. Casey, so sub for you. Ah! <laughs> we did it. Dude, are you leave? Oh. Feel the flesh. Get the flesh out of you. Get your <laughs> Instead of God, I'm like, oh my gosh.